ladies and gentlemen. You're a free man, Sam. I don't know what she's cooking up against me, but she's cooking something up. What are you talking about, Dad? I'm not leaving my flat! Hello and thanks for joining us. It's time for Culture with our weekly film show. And the spotlight is on the Oscars coming up very soon. We have the pleasure of welcoming on our set Kautha Benhania, the Tunisian director of The Man Who Sold His Skin, nominated for Best International Feature. The film tells the story of a Syrian man forced to flee his war-torn country and who manages to reach Europe after turning his body into a living work of art. A powerful film with a very different take on immigration and the plight of refugees. Take a look. Jeffrey Godefroy turns worthless objects into works that cost millions and millions of dollars just by signing them. You want my soul? I want your back. عشان يشتغل بأوروبا. كتير منيح. شغل مع فنان تعرفت عليه هون. هو فيه يضبط لي الفيزا وكل شيء بس يعني أنا لسه ما. اللقاء تع. تع. Director Kouta Benhania is with us in the studio, and our film critic Lisa Nesselson is with us by Skype from her Paris flat. Hello to both of you, and first question to you, uh, Kautha. Uh, your character is faced with a, a real dilemma, obtaining freedom in exchange for becoming himself a commodity in the form of a, a living piece of art. What did you try to say, really, with this film? I, I wanted to say a lot of uh, things. I wanted to tell a modern tale. Mm -hmm. It's also, I wanted to visit the uh, Faust legend because uh, at the end of the day, it's a Faustian bargain between this artist and this uh, Syrian uh, refugee. I a also pact with the devil. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's a modern uh, uh, pact with the devil. I wanted also to give a face to a refugee, a single story, uh, and to invite, you know, people to visit, to be in his body and his shoes in this long journey. Well, let's bring in our film critic, Lisa, who uh, really did enjoy uh, your film and who's been following your career uh, very closely. Lisa, what do you have to say? Well, your previous work has examined Tunisian society from a mysterious real-life slasher on a motorcycle to date rape to the training of Muslim religious leaders, as well as challenges to gender equality and the contrast between North African and European society. This film definitely achieves one of my favorite combinations, which is thought-provoking plus entertaining. We watch attractive people struggle with unattractive dilemmas like the unfairness of political exile, the built-in lunacy of the international art market, and whether it's possible to outsmart an unfair world to keep true love alive. Is it ever a good idea to make a bargain with the devil? Should Monica Pellucci play all of her roles from now on as a blonde? And uh, in addition to all the intricate suspense, it is beautifully shot. I think anything that gets us to reflect on the plight of refugees, both political and economic, is a plus. Parodying the international art market while telling a suspenseful love story wasn't an obvious combination, but here it definitely works. And a convincing cast, uh, Lisa mentioned Monica Bellucci, cold and very blonde in this film. Uh, there are also um, actors lesser known, uh, notably the main actor uh, who's not as well known, but who's very convincing. He really carries uh, the story. Tell us more about him and how did you find him? I found him during the uh, casting process because I was looking for a Syrian actor. So I, I, I spent a lot of time in casting. And at the end, uh, you know, I received his self-taped audition and I felt that he can carry the movie, you know, uh, and uh, play this very complex uh, character. And he's, you know, like this um, actor, outsider actor, because he's not really actor in real life. And uh, giving him uh, this main part in front of Monica Bellucci, as you said, she's an icon and uh, a very famous actress. It was something that 
very interesting even for the story because in in the story he's an outsider to this art world you know he's sneaking like this to just to have food so i found it very uh, amusing and he's a great actor he won the best uh, uh, actor in venice film Fes festival and of course he has this uh, incredible tattoo on his back and i think lisa has a question about that tattoo yes i want to know are the details authentic in other words if that was the correct size could you travel with it? And how hard was it to create makeup that looks and moves like a real tattoo? Uh, yeah, it's it was a, also a long, long process. But, you know, you were mentioning something that I, I like it very much, saying that my movie is ent entertaining, you know, that you found it entertaining because I, I love movie that, entertain because I think it's uh, uh, entertainment before everything but besides you know I tried to tell this story and to give it meaning and to give it depth in a uh, many layer and uh, the tattoo it's not a copy of the the uh, an exact copy of the Schengen visa because the Schengen visa is horizontal and we have to fit it to a human back so we redesign it you know in a way to uh, to uh, put it in the back of the the actor and the the makeup uh, process was long. It was every day. It took like between four and three hours, you know, before shooting to put this design, the very sensitive, you know, uh, tattoo on the back of uh, of the actor. And you're also keen to mock the old the art world, uh, it's often seen as uh, very elitist. It's definitely the case in this film. Yes, uh, you know, my intention wasn't not only to mock, to mock the art world, because I think the, the art world, I, 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 I'd rather talk about the art market, you mm. know, uh, because it's a very complex system and it refers to the capitalism in general, you know. If you take this tiny part of mark, the market, you know, it will give you, you know, an, an exaggerated idea about uh, cap capitalism. So the main idea was to understand, you know, the code of this, uh, uh, this market and to put inside it a very provocative work of art, which is a human being. So you can see all the limit of this system. And as we said, the film is nominated for an Oscar. How excited are you? What are you hoping for? And are you actually going to be able to travel to the US given the pandemic? Uh, yes, I'll be uh, I'm able to travel. I'll, <laughs> I'll travel even if I take a boat like a refugee. <laughs> you know? But I'm going, you know, to uh, the Oscar. I'm very excited. It's the first time for Tunisia to be nominated uh, uh, in the Oscar for this category. And also I'm representing uh, Africa. It's the only African movie and uh, representing also all the Arab speaking countries. So it's a huge uh, representation and responsibility. And I'm very exciting. Yeah, excited. Sorry. <laughs> Clearly a great <laughs> honor. Kautha Benhania, thank you very much. Uh, your film is uh, called The Man Who Sold His Skin. It's out in Tunisia and it will be out in many other countries very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's now move on to another film uh, competing in the Oscars. Uh, it's called uh, The Father, starring Anthony Hopkins. Uh, it's by French, French playwright Florian Zeller. It's his directing debut based on his award-winning play. It's up for six Oscars. Lisa, is it worth all the talk? Is it worth all these nominations? Absolutely. Uh, adapting plays to the screen is one of the most interesting challenges in filmmaking. Do you preserve some of the theatricality or do you try to convince audiences that they're watching the only possible form for the story? A movie. Now, there was dancing on stage when West Side Story found phenomenal success on Broadway, but taking that dancing into the genuine streets of New York made the film version thrilling in a new, more expansive way. The Father takes place almost entirely in an apartment, or possibly apartments, in London. Zeller adapted his play from French into English with playwright Christopher Hampton because it was Zeller's dream to have Anthony Hopkins play the title character. He got his wish, and we got an amazingly rich cinematic experience. And uh, Olivia Coleman also with Anthony Hopkins. Let's take a look at Hopkins as a man whose memory is playing tricks on him. I've always loved tap dancing. You really? Wow, I'm still great at it. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs> 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 
Jolly good. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I know, I know. She reminds me of. Who? It's Lucy. Lucy, when she was younger. Lucy? Yeah, my other daughter. <laughs> That's right. There is a resemblance, don't you think? Yeah, maybe. Yes. <laughs> yes. Her unbearable habit of laughing inanely. What a living legend, Anthony Hopkins. And uh, Lisa, compelling performance as always. Well, in my experience as a viewer, he's always convincing. When as Hannibal Lecter, he tells you he ate a victim with fava beans and a nice Chianti. You can almost hear the fork touch the plate. In this film, he takes you into the ever worsening conundrum of a man whose own brain can no longer be trusted. Living each day, you know, involves having your bearings, knowing who you are, where you are, what's expected of you. And here he literally can't make sense of the world. Uh, Hopkins, who has made a lot of movies, has called it the best role of his life. From cinema veterans with Anthony Hopkins to young aspiring uh, filmmakers, some trying to break into the business, and very often they try their luck at short films and they can compete in the Nikon Film Festival. It's in its final stretch. Tell us more, Lisa. Well, every year, the French division of the camera company hosts a competition for short films lasting two minutes and 20 seconds on a theme, which this year was a jeu, which means a game or to play in some way. 1,675 film contestants ran with that idea, and a celebrity jury will award an array of prizes to lucky winners among the 50 finalists. And anybody with an internet connection has until April 11th to vote for the audience prize. I liked one entry called Lumiere, whose director is only 17, and I got a real kick out of Je suis Pipotron. I'm Pipotron, which is a dark satire of how top political figures generate their speeches and form their policy statements. And the results will be announced on April 30th. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you all for watching. I leave you with a glimpse of that short film we were just talking about, I am Pipotron. Find us and follow us, of course, on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram for more culture. See you soon. What are you doing already in face? Nonobstant. Perfect. My note? Nonobstant de cette difficulté induite. Nous ne devons pas nous interdire d'essayer certaines modalités déclinables. Organisation matricielle. Oh. <rire>